Hello everyone, this is Taki from BigHighTalk.com and I'm here in Hong Kong. I've been waiting all week to do this interview. Hello, Michael Canna. I've been waiting all week too. Have you really? How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You got oven mitts for hands. That's, that's oh, well. No, 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 that's good. That's good. Um, Michael, um, as I mentioned to you earlier, I tried my best not to have a preconceived idea of who you are mm -hmm. because many people that have um, either YouTube videos and such, they have their own through your pictures, they interpret who you are as a photographer. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's the right, that's their opinion. But of course. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not who you are. And so there's a few things, okay, so you are a landscape photographer, you shoot Hasselblad, you shoot film, mm -hmm. and you shoot black and white. But that's a very, it's like saying you are a male, this is your age, this right. is where you live, and this yes. is the color of your hair and eyes. That's not really who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I try my best not to have any preconceived ideas, mm -hmm. and I am, you know, I think you're a storyteller. Mm. You're a fantastic storyteller. Thank you. And um, so as we went through uh, your presentation, yes. and we looked at all your pictures, um, you said some quite unique things. I just kind of mm. wanted to go through um, uh, sort of the, the ideas, and maybe yeah. people can sort of see, um, there's enough pictures that you've taken out there that people can just go and look at those pictures. Yes. Maybe. And mm -hmm. and I think one of the things you mentioned was that you want people to uh, interpret for themselves what they see. Yes. Right. You don't mm -hmm. want to uh, prescribe to people with a long description mm -hmm. of what you felt, what it is, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, the idea of search for the hidden, mm -hmm. you don't want to expound on that a little bit? Well, if you want the, the hour version or the 10 second version. <laughs> well, I, I would love to talk to you for an hour. But I, I, I think we, we often photograph exactly what we see. Mm. And it seems to me that, you know, that, that, that I, I, I try to look for what I can't see. Mm. I'm looking for suggestions, what is behind the wall or over the horizon or through the trees or behind the mist or in the clouds or yes. through the snow, yes. things that are suggested. Yes. Um, and it's, it's far more interesting for me to, because it asks questions rather than presents specific answers. Mm -hmm. And you find that because you shoot film, that helps a little bit in that? Again, that's a long story. I mean, I shoot film for many, many reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of the really good aspects of, of the digital revolution, um, I rebel against. You know, yes. I don't want an instant gratification. Yes. I don't want to know what I've just photographed. I don't yes. need you know this high uh, fidelity. Uh, you know, it's it's for me. I prefer this slow process. I prefer the journey yes. more than the destination, frankly. So, yes. You know, if it takes me six months to get to a print, that's absolutely fine. Sometimes yeah. it takes 30 years, you yes. know, because I photograph in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and I find negatives now, and I go into the darkroom, I attempt to print them. Sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't come out. But it's it's not all very controllable, which I really like. I, like yeah. <laughs> I don't like it to be so predictable that I know exactly what I have each time. You mentioned uh, two different things. You said, I love the fact the darkroom is not an exact science. Definitely not. And you also says you actually debate with yourself in the darkroom as well as while you're shooting. Yes, there's this course. conversation. Yes, and so I thought that was a, kind of a. Mm -hmm. It's funny, but I mean, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's an honest truth. Mm. Yes. Of the way you like to shoot. What is that? It's just like a musician composing music. You know, you have this choice of notes. You don't say that's it, finished, accomplished. You say, well, what if I try this? And what if I put this one slightly flat and that one slightly sharp and move this up an octave? And, and that's the way you create. Mm -hmm. you, it, it, it's, it's the journey. It's not just the, here it is, finished, done. You know, to be, to be honest, like that. To be honest I, 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 if I had, you know, you talked about how in your image, obviously it's subjective because it's through your eyes mm -hmm. and that will always bleed into your images either consciously or subconsciously. Mm -hmm. So you talked about your childhood and mm -hmm. how that's probably your greatest influence mm -hmm. uh, as a photographer yes, because that yes. shapes who you are as a person. Very much. And, you know, mm -hmm. we can talk about that for hours. A mm -hmm. beautiful story of you growing up and those sort of things and you searching for things mm -hmm. that are spiritual. Yes. But really, um, we as well, we, we need to... Um, as a photographer, we do tend to project. You know, we tend to like. For me, when I when I was trying not to study who you are, yes. I still had preconceived ideas. Your landscape, like I thought, yeah. landscape photographers are mm -hmm. more like classical musicians. Right. But really, when I saw you, I'm like, mm -hmm. this guy's jazz. <laughs> you, you are. You might have studied the classics, <laughs> right. right? You might yes. study Chopin, yeah. Mozart. Mm -hmm. You yes. know the rules, and you yes. talked a little bit about that. You yes. know the rules. Yeah, you have to know the rules in you, order to break them. You need them. It's very important. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, when you first start, you strictly follow the rule of thirds, mm -hmm. and then later on, you realize, you know what? 
for this picture, I want to use a rule of fifths. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs to be over a little bit more. But mm -hmm. as a beginner, you do need to understand those things. Yes. But mm -hmm. you are you are a rock star. I mean, I don't I've even want to say jazz for, for over forty years. Yes. You know, one should be able to break rules at this point. I yes. Think. Yes. And one should understand the rules so that you can break them. But you connected. You know, you mentioned about how this bleeding of your influence. You took the pictures in Hokkaido, mm -hmm. and then you, you, like you said, you searched through your archives, mm -hmm. and you noticed that some of your older pictures, so you yes. thought you discovered this new style or this mm -hmm. new aesthetic, and then you go back mm -hmm. 40 years and say, actually, I, yes. I didn't even know it was there. Yeah, so it's almost confirmed what was there beforehand. Exactly. But sometimes you're looking for, in a sense, a mirror, you're looking for resonance, you're looking for connection, yes. and you don't know until you find it yes. what it is. Yes. And even when you found it, you're not sure if it's the right thing until yes, yes. much later, and then you look back. Yeah. You, you notice when I was speaking, it's so much easier to talk about work that you did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And then the work you're doing today, I, I don't really have anything to say about. You know, the, Italian, <laughs> you know, the work in Italy, because yeah. it's not yet uh, in my soul somehow. It's not being uh, digested. Yes. And, and you don't know where you are until you're past it. And, mm -hmm. and the fact as well that you shoot film, and you might not see those negatives for a couple of months. Oh, many months, yes. And, and, then, and, and, and even then, mm -hmm. you still have the other half of, as we mentioned, you are also a darkroom artist. You yes. also mm -hmm. work in the darkroom, and that's another half mm -hmm. of what you have to do. Right. And then right. even then, you do, you said, you kept on talking about, and I think it would break people's hearts when you say, you tear it up. So well, you, you do you it, have to, yeah. and then you're just like, Ugh. Which artist doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I save all my negatives, no, digital I, negatives, or, you know, you're kind of scared to... to you can't, you can't. I mean, <laughs> it, that's, that's, that's the ownership thing again, as if you somehow owned everything. You know, you yes. know I photographed that tree, it's mine. You know, this yes. photograph is mine. Yes, yes. It's, it's not. It's a shared collaboration, a conversation. It's, 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 I like how you said that, yeah. Well, that's what it is. Yeah. And, so and you, you have to let it go. So even mm -hmm. since someone asked you about, do, would you ever do silhouettes or portraits? Mm -hmm. And you said, I do it all the time. I take right. portraits of trees. Right, it's true. And, and you mentioned <laughs> that even a tree, you have a conversation. Not a literal one, right. but there mm -hmm. is a relationship between you and the tree or you and the city and the landscape. Mm -hmm. and, and there's this two-way communication. You were influenced by it. And when you take the picture, obviously, your influence is on the image. Mm -hmm. And so um, I thought that was a really it's called unique called exchange way. of energy. Exchange of energy. It's like Heisenberg's principle of indeterminacy. Oh, well, I have to look that up. So I'm going to look that up. I don't know what, what on earth. Whatever you observe yes. is changed by the fact that you observe it. Oh, yes. So in scientifically, when they're trying to measure microscopic yes. particles, yes. They can't actually measure them properly without disturbing them. Like quant the the qu no, quantum physics. It, yes. yes, the quantum physics. It disturbs yes. it. It blows yeah. my mind that yeah. even and, at that and, quantum and, level that and it so exists. so when you approach a tree, you know, you're, you're, there's something going on. Oh, Whether wow. you like it or not, yes, of it, course. there's something Th going that, on. That makes and complete when sense. When you're photographing a building, it's, yeah. you know, and sometimes we like to think, well, that's just concrete or that's just a plant or whatever. Yeah. No, we're it's all not. part of this of together. Yes, we're all part yes. of the living organism. That's right. Yeah. Um, another thing that you said that I really liked was you said setting goals limits the ability to get lost. Mm. Yes. So do you want to talk about, I mean, that sounds almost crazy, but when you Please. hear you saying it, it makes complete sense. Well, okay. So if I, you know, if I say I'm going to walk from here to that corner mm -hmm. and I go straight through the middle, I will have missed, you know, these wonderful chairs over here and that mm. detour over there, looking under the table and, mm. and the window view over there and, and all these other possibilities. So in the landscape, when you're photographing, what I often, you know, usually I say, oh, that looks interesting over there. And I will, yes, I will head to it. But I have to be aware that maybe it's far more interesting over here or, or over there. And if I get lost, you know, then I'm not going in this direction. Mm -hmm. You know, if we set a goal and we fill it, we're almost destined to follow a straight line which may be fine in you know, corporate life, whatever it is, because you have goals. And yes, that. yes. But as a creative person, that seems to me to, to really restrict your ability to, to, to seek out the other possibilities, which is what creativity is all about. Jazz. That's what I'm saying. You're jazz. Well, jazz, yes. Improvisation is very yes. important in yes. photography. And you even mentioned some of the pictures that someone pointed something out to you, and even you as a photographer, like that window that was open. Yes, exactly. So someone's like, yeah. I love this picture, this and that. So they're interpreting it their yes. way, which you, you encourage. Yeah. And they're like, notice that window. Yeah. And you're like, wow, I didn't even, I didn't even see that. So even when you frame it with the, yes. actually you said something really neat. You said uh, like um, looking for the picture within the picture. Yes. You know. Yeah. So you you talk yeah. about that in many different levels. One of it was just cropping, mm -hmm. but yes. even just you take the picture and because and you, you can't again. see the image, yeah. you mm -hmm. have to then re look at the frame and then right. reinterpret it again. Which is one of the big advantages for me of working with film. 
And I know Lycraft has come out with a digital camera now where you can't actually see the results. I did the, the redo of it, the MD. Oh, you did, MD, right, yeah. Yeah. It's actually very fun to yeah. shoot with. No, it's, well, it's, it, 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 it's, for me, it stops some of the creativity when you actually, you take a photo and you see what you have. When you take yes. a photo and you see what you have. You know, you know what we call it in digital photography? We call it chimping. Oh, I, I don't know why yeah, it's called <laughs> chimping, but you say we chimp the photo. <laughs> really? It's because you're, yeah. you're looking and then something yeah. sometimes even happens in front of you, you miss it. Yes, of course. Because yeah. you're so focused. With that yeah. MD, you're always yeah. looking and you stop. Yeah. After a while, you stop looking because you realize right. you can't see it. Yeah. And you're yeah. missing no, those moments. Good. Yeah. And, I, and I really like, I think I mentioned that the, the, the idea that you never quite know when you ha have the image. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, there's, 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 I mean, it goes back to also philosophy and theology. And there's a man named Paul Tillich, a famous theologian that said that doubt is central to faith, mm. which means that whatever you believe in, you have to doubt it. Mm. As soon as you actually accept it, it becomes dogmatic, basically. Mm. So whatever it is, whether it's the law of thirds or, you know, yeah. symmetry, or you have to continually kind of nudge push. it and punch it and pull it and, you know, fight to be out of the boundaries. I like the yeah. idea of how you, you talk about the struggle. Mm -hmm. I think even Beethoven talked about the struggle of writing. I mean, Mozart, there he is, was yeah. kind of a genius, yes, yeah. a little bit mad almost, right. and he just like wrote it once and never looked at it again. But yeah. most of us are not that way. Exactly. You struggle yes. with what, what you're creating. You do. If it's easy, you know, it's not so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> just it's like, it's like any sport or any activity when you really have fight to get something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, I'm, I, it's not really a question, but I like what you said uh, about creative directors with in the commercial industry because mm -hmm. I'm sure there are some commercial photographers that are watching this or yes. want to get into commercial photography right. and you talked about creative people should allow other creative people to do their own thing if they want the best results yes. of course and you're in that mm -hmm. pos uh, position which I think is the dream of all mm -hmm. photographers like I said mm -hmm. I stopped doing commercial sports yes. and weddings because yes. I was always told what to do and right. to me as a creative I just felt so sapped that I didn't yeah. want to do it anymore yeah. so I left mm -hmm. um, and now I do what I want and I'm yeah. happy Great. And, yeah. and so yeah. I, I thought that was a really powerful statement. Mm -hmm. So thank you mm -hmm. for, for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, you already mentioned it, but the idea that it's the, the journey, the journey yes. of the photo. Mm -hmm. And um, also the picture is a conversation. Yes. I really like that term. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I think photographers are essentially mediums. They're, you know, they're translating what is out there and bringing it through you or through the camera yes. for other people to view. You know, yeah. Most people don't have the opportunities that, that, that we have as photographers. I've mentioned many times I, I get to places that I wouldn't dream of if I wasn't a photographer because of your, because you're inquisitive, because you're curious. You keep yeah. pushing it and you, and you get to these really strange places at odd times of the day and night that nobody yeah. will get to and you, and yeah, you yeah. see amazing things. Yeah, it's yeah, nice yeah. to be able to bring that back and share it to people. Yeah, exactly. And, um, an idea of uh, the pictures of conversation. I thought it was kind of funny mm -hmm. that at some of the pictures you actually stop talking. There's that one with the. Uh, it was mostly white, and then there's some trees, and you you just. It was so right. powerful that you mm -hmm. stopped talking in some mm -hmm. of the pictures. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so in a way, yes, a picture is a conversation, but we think conversation is in literal words. Mm. But mm -hmm. sometimes there's no need for words, and yet there's still a conversation. Well, exactly. As they say, you don't necessarily walk up to a tree and say, Hi, tree, nice to meet you. Can I photograph you? Or may I photograph you? Yes. But you may think it. You may have a certain you know, cerebral conversation with that living organism. And many of us were looking at prints, and even mm -hmm. when you did a presentation, which is a, a just an echo of the beauty mm -hmm. of your, your physical negatives and your prints. Mm -hmm. Could you print small? And I, I do, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I like how yeah. you mentioned that mm -hmm. it's small because it's intimate and it draws you in. Yes. And I never yeah. really thought about it that way. So that's a, a mm -hmm. fantastic philosophy that you have about, you know, instead mm -hmm. of doing it this size, right. which is fine. I mean, this is this is a thing that we're doing. They're all options. It's yes, but, but it's true. When you look at these prints yeah. smaller, it does mm -hmm. really draw you in. Yeah. But the um, idea of that the conversation is, um, you mentioned about the white spaces. Mm -hmm. The negative space it doesn't have to be white; it could be black. Mm -hmm. But how those spaces can actually draw people in. Yes, it draws you in. Yeah. So, can you explain a little bit your philosophy about that? It's the same as again in music. You know, sometimes we have spaces where there is no sound. Mm. Sometimes we have a long note as opposed to a lot of sharp notes. Mm. Um, in photography, as in all the other arts, I think you don't necessarily have to fill up the, the rectangle. Mm. You can. It's mm. an option, of course. You mm. can have it. You know, you can you can compose around the edges, or you can compose in the middle, or you can do symmetry, you can do thirds. There's, yeah. there's so many different ways of, of, of composing yeah. an image, whether it's in photography or any of the other arts. Mm -hmm. um, and I began to experiment uh, a good deal with, with, with this um, a few elements in, in, in the rectangle. So there is space yes. for the eye to rest and be calm. 
Um, and it's, it, it represents a lot of Asian artists like this also, you know, particularly and they put characters down here. Yes, like, yes. It's uh, quite wonderful. I, can I be so bold as to maybe even say that, that in your Hokkaido pictures, I saw mm -hmm. that more strongly than anything else. You weren't yes. showing them in a, yeah. in a historical way, but no, when I saw those, yes. yeah. I, I literally felt being drawn into those mm -hmm. white spaces. Yes. With yeah. um, You were fascinated with the fences. Yes, I have many, many studies and they're just fences. And, you know, yeah. really, I think mm -hmm. if you took just the image element that we would consider mm -hmm. points of interest right. and you shrunk it down, it's 10% of the whole image. Absolutely. The other 90% yes. is just this just white. white. Yes. And yet it's, yeah. it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. And you and you use it quite well, mm -hmm. yeah. So that that's uh, that's mm -hmm. actually one of my favorite yes. series that you've done. But right. you've you've done yeah. many different series. I have. I could only show a very small percentage. Yeah, too. well, 40, <laughs> 40, 40 years of shooting. So yes. definitely. So you know what? Yeah. We're gonna we're mm -hmm. gonna wrap this up because you've mm -hmm. been talking for four hours. Yes. And too so much. and so I think it's time for you to rest. But just sort of two questions. And you yeah. did kind of mention it in the in the presentation. One is uh, so you said your childhood had a strong influence, but yes. in terms of photographs, graphic influences, mm -hmm. those that are, are fans of your work, they would mm -hmm. like to know, okay, well, can you point us to, they don't necessarily have to be landscape, but mm -hmm. you mentioned a few different photographers that you look up to, mm -hmm. or that you are yes. influenced. Wh which ones would you? Well, I come from a Western tradition, so most of the early photographers that influenced me were Western, so mm -hmm. Bill Brandt, yes. an English photographer, very, very powerful use of uh, shadows, uh, graphic design. Mm. Um, his, his ability to print in a, in a manner that was just very unconventional at the time. Mm. A lot of black, a lot of white. Yes. Um, Eugene Age, photographed yes. in Paris for yes. many, many years. Again, I, you know, I, I mentioned that for me, what I got out of it is that he would go to the same place over and over and come out with completely different photographs yes. time and time again. And you showed that very well yes. in his work, but as well mm -hmm. in your work. It's yes. very clear. Yeah. Mario Giacomelli, who I probably didn't mention, he was an Italian photographer with mm. very, very strong graphics. Um, Joseph Sudek, mm. uh, Czech photographer. Mm. I mentioned the light kind of emanating from within, you know, almost like infrared. Like the, the factory yes. images that yes. you did. It's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. right. You can yeah. almost sense it's coming at you. Right. Which is very right. difficult to do considering that's not really how people see photography. No, 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 no. Yeah. We, we, we usually are used to the single light source of yeah, the yeah, sunshine yeah. or whatever. And, also. Yeah. So those are the kind of, and then I moved to the States. So we had, you know, strong Ruth Bernhard I worked with yes. for, for about 10 years. So she was very powerful influence. Um, uh, Sheila, who influenced me to photograph the the River Rouge factory, mm. you know, then it gets know, to course. like so many, you know. Of then, course, it's like and, asking and a musician about yeah. who is his influences. You go on for yeah, hours, and then, and then you think, well, you know, almost every photographer you, you you or every artist you look at, they influence you some way. Of course, or or you say, you know, no, nah, there's nothing in that, but I. But usually, there's there's something mm. that's going to influence you. Mm. And then, as I mentioned also, the longer you do it, the more you influence yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> right. It's just this little the, the, the circle, is, right? Yes. Yes. And you actually yeah. showed it, which is amazing. Yes, yeah, I yeah. enjoyed that. <laughs> um, so last question mm -hmm. is, um, so there were many photographers that, mm -hmm. as you saw, the ones that were questions were very, yeah. very specific to photography or their photography, mm -hmm. their approach. Mm -hmm. So if you can give, um, you know, if you, you know, people would say stuff like, if you can ask God one question, what would you ask mm -hmm. him? So um, I'm not putting you at, at that. No, please but, don't. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, there are many budding photographers that yes, do look yeah. up to. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. you had, like you mentioned, you had the people that you looked up to. Yes. And so there mm -hmm. are many here that really looked up to what you do. Mm -hmm. So if you were to give them advice, mm -hmm. one or two big advice. It's not like what ISO film, no, not no, no, what that's, camera shoot. All what, that's what, irrelevant. Yeah, so exactly. As as and I actually enjoy that in general. <laughs> Nobody asks, what film do you shoot? Right. What ISO? Like, yeah. that's not important. Right. Mm -hmm. But what advice would you like to give to those that are watching this right now? Well, I mean, it comes down to passionate intensity and hard work, basically. Mm. I mean, those are the, the, the things that, that get you there. It's not, I mentioned that many photographers are, you know, they're accountants, doctors, you know, surgeons, whatever else, and they, and they photograph on Sunday. Yes. And they expect to be a photographer. Mm. But it's it's hours you put into it, you know. As I, say, I mean, I've been doing it for 40 plus years, but, mm. but it's kind of daily, nightly, it's all the time, you're always looking. Yes. And any photographer or any artist or any sports person, any dancer, they're, they're constantly practicing. Yes. You know, and you never know when the right moment occurs. The you decisive have no moment. idea. Yeah. Yes. It just you you just don't know. Yes. But you had to be prepared for it. So yes. you know. Uh, what was it? Uh, Pliny says, fortune favors the brave. And then uh, Pasteur said, fortune favors the prepared mind. Mm. And my favorite one that I think I invented is fortune favors those who work the hardest. Mm. And as a photographer, it is that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the cameras are important, but 
who cares? It's what you see. Yes. And then you have to really understand that, yes, you can be influenced by all these other photographers, but if you just spend your life imitating people, you're not going to get anywhere. No. You can be you know, a good karaoke artist, a good yes. guitarist, and follow other musicians. Ultimately, you're looking for yourself. Yes. There's something unique about every single person. Yes. And you have to tap into that. Yes. And so, it's not easy to find. If it was easy to find, we'd all be creative geniuses. Yes. Very few of us even have the time to get there. Yes. But essentially, we have to find that. If you yes. want to be, I mean, if you, you can be a successful, competent, professional photographer and not mm. really have a vision. Yes. I'm not saying that. You can use it in the trade. You can of course. do your thing. Yes. But if you want to, I think, get anywhere in the arts as a, and, and have uh, your own um, style, uh, Voice, vision, conversation, yes, all this sort of stuff, yes. you just have to look inside as well as outside yes. you know it, it's and that's back to that thing about conversation you know it's yes. it's it's me and it's the subject yes. you know <laughs> actually you said everything you, else that goes in between but you said, but you said something very powerful you said um, when you look at something and there's many different photographers you said each one has their own separate conversation that's what and it so, should be so you're not saying yeah. I'm standing in the right spot no you no, are no, all no. in the wrong it's each there one has their own conversation I, yeah that's what with, I keep saying there isn't the a right spot there yes. isn't a right condition yes. there isn't a right photograph it's yes. not whether it's black and white color digital non it's yes. nothing it's it's how you say it yes. what you have to say yes. it's not you, I mean, there's so much competitiveness about you know which camera yes. and stuff. It's it's irrelevant. Yes, it's, yes. It's really yourself, finding yeah. yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. So thank you so much, okay, uh, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, wow, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. This has been a, an all week event leading up to this yes, event. Yes, yeah. And so uh -huh. thank you so much for coming to Hong Kong. Hopefully, you know I am in Vancouver. I know. So I'm just down the road in Seattle. So down the road. So <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day I can meet you yes. in a field. All right. On your 10-hour exposures. All right. And we'll be eating sandwiches Sounds and good. talking about jazz music. Perfect. As, as the image is, come, <laughs> is burning onto the negative. I look forward to it. Excellent. All right. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. Take care of yourself. All right. Thank so you. thank you for watching you. and happy shooting. Mm -hmm.